All right, uh, so again, steps for being able to do a path animation. Uh, I'm gonna do this with shapes in After Effects, but you can do this with shapes from Illustrator. And maybe I'll do a separate recording and show you that. Um, I'm just gonna use my pen tool. The hotkey for that one is G, and I'm just gonna try and draw something that sort of looks like a wave. I'm gonna do the same example as we just did so that you can sort of follow that along. So I'm gonna start with something that's got a little bit of a wave to it. I don't want this to be an outline. I do want it to be a fill. So I'm gonna click into my contents here. I'm gonna go down underneath shape. I'm gonna turn off the stroke and I'm gonna turn on the fill. Now I don't want this to be red. I do want it to be blue. So I'm gonna change the color here and get just sort of like a soft blue um, wave. Now the property that I'm going to animate here is the path property. Again, to get to it, you just need to drill down under the layer, underneath the contents, underneath the shape, underneath path, and then here's the stopwatch of what you want to animate. So this is the position where I want it to start. And I'll, I could probably actually make this the middle uh, and maybe go back and animate the beginning. So what I'm going to do is you do want to keep track of trying to use the same number of keyframes that you have, uh, or essentially the positions of these. Um, if you add uh, points while you're part of your animation, sometimes it can get messed up. So just try to use the same number as much as you can. If that means you're just going to eventually stack these things literally right on top of each other, that's fine. As long as the shape looks like what you want it to look like. So I'm going to move my timeline slider just a few frames forward. And I'm trying to animate this slowly over time so that it doesn't like mess up. I still have my pen tool selected. You could do it with your pen tool or your move tool as long as you can move individual points along the direction that you want these to go in. So I'm going to just try to rearrange this a little bit until it kind of has the shape that I'm wanting it to have. Um, and let me see if I can zoom out a little bit and position that on my screen. So let's see, I've got a little bit of motion now, right? It's sort of like reaching out a little bit in the motion that I want it to have. Again, just move my timeline slider forward a few frames and try to do a similar amount of motion. Now the only issue with animating this way is if you want this to have a certain timing, uh, the timing can be kind of a little bit of a challenge because you're moving so many different points for every single keyframe. There's no like controlling each of these individually, if that makes sense. It's kind of like every single keyframe is just rearranging the entire shape every time you move anything. So if I start moving any of these keyframes, what I should try to think about is how far distant apart these keyframes are, trying to be consistent with them. If I want this to have a consistent speed, I need to try and move it a similar amount of distance between each of these spots and a similar amount of distance between the keyframes themselves. So let's see if I'm getting a little bit of motion. You can always move the keyframes around and stuff, but it's going to move the keyframes for all of those. So let's hit play. That's maybe a little bit too fast, but I'm just going to keep going and see if I can maybe change it later. So let's get this to curl a little bit because we want it to sort of look like it's a crashing wave. So again, path animations, using the path feature only to sort of create, I, I would call this like a fake rotoscope effect. So if you wanted something to look like it's sort of transforming itself, there's a lot of fun things that you can do with this to get it to kind of look like it has that particular motion. And I'll move forward again. Get this to crash a little bit and curl. Eventually, I do want these to overlap so that it just fills that in. And I'm just going to work straight ahead, which is just like moving my keyframes forward, going a little bit of a distance forward, working in kind of a consistent, consistent motion here. Great way to add really articulated motion. I'm being very particular about where I want this to move to. It's great for like liquids, clearly. Here's some of my keyframes that are starting to overlap each other. That's helpful to make it look like the object is just starting to fill in that space. I want it to maybe like shrink into a tiny ball and disappear. I don't know, like what kind of motion do you want it to come out of the frame with? Um, let's curl this a little bit more. This wave is starting to shrink starting to crash backwards towards itself at the beginning. Shrink these properties a little bit more. Rolling back towards the beginning. 
flatten this a little bit and try to hide these keyframes. Again, just hiding these keyframes. Whoops, I need to change this one a little bit. There we go. Um, this is a common issue where you accidentally sh select the whole shape. You see there where I'm not actually selecting individual points. Make sure you have the individual points selected. My best suggestion is try selecting like the shape or the contents and then click on the points and see if that gives you a little bit more control. Sometimes it After Effects can be a little bit um, like sticky trying to get you to hold on to the whole object, which is kind of not what you want. Sorry, I need to zoom out a sec. And I haven't tested this in a little bit. And actually what's probably gonna happen is there's gonna be a few places where this is messing up. Oh, it's going so far, okay. Um, if you have to go back and make changes, time travel is weird uh, in After Effects. If you're going backwards in time, it may affect how it, it interacts with the future like positions of where these little points are. So it may sort of like mess up your animation a little bit in that sense. Just know that time travel is weird. You probably already knew that. And let me do a couple more and we'll call it good on this. And I'll stop recording so that it's a super short, not 50 minute tutorial. Uh, again, this may be a way that you want to animate like quite a few things in your scene. Maybe it's just one of the main things that you want to move around on your composition. You can also copy paste these keyframes. So if I wanted this to like reverse the other direction, I could like reverse my keyframes by copy pasting them. Uh, these are all things that can be reused. So. Here's where it's getting a little wild. I'm trying to avoid adding keyframes. I'm trying to avoid taking keyframes away because that does mess it up sometimes. To get it to return back to its original position is gonna take a little bit of work, but let's see what we got so far. Zoom out. Kind of fun. It's a little rigid, right? It's got a few places where it's not perfectly smooth, but path animation. 